the dreaded chair you know usually when i sit on these chairs it's usually for an embarrassing story and i think this series is exactly that so guys welcome to speed tales um a series where me soham and the entire film crew talks about all of our adventures and crazy stories that have happened along the tdh journey and we wanted to let you guys know what all is up and how we deal with our problems so this is just that a candid conversation about some cool stories So if you guys didn't know I uh, recently went on my first ever race weekend thanks to KTM Cup and their season 2 and I was among the top 13 auto journos and uh, yeah we had a blast it wasn't competitive but there were quite a lot of shenanigans that happened and quite a lot that fell apart so let's get right into it we start from day 1 I landed in Coimbatore on a Thursday evening and Friday morning I had to basically do practice. I opted for practice because I was new to Curry Motor Speedway and I didn't know my way around it. Uh however during the practice sessions I was stuck behind uh behind an instructor and I just couldn't go fast. So my lap times were maybe top 6 top 7 and all of them were pretty similar since everybody was going through training however i didn't really find like i was pushing the bike nor was i uh giving myself any form of challenge so the next day was free practice and qualifying which made me a little nervous but it got even more intense just the next day day 2 is where things got a little interesting i uh, did my free practice in the morning and i was fifth fastest in pre in free practice um which made me very comfortable since the top 3 boys were a level ahead and the guy in front of me was basically 0.06 or basically very close within a second from p4 to p8 we were all within a second which gave me a little bit of relief and uh, when it came to practice i was feeling much more confident and my lap times were definitely showing it i had shaved off between a second and a half and 2 seconds by the time i had finished my practice and i was happy about that but uh, you know racing and you know large events always never go as planned so things got delayed rain settled and uh, there were a lot of red flags considering there were a lot of amateur racers and uh, yeah since there were so many delays our qualifying session became a a dusk affair and uh, i didn't carry a clear visor i had a tinted visor which was the case for pretty much most journalists and most of the people on track with me too so most journos said yolo and we went on to the track but uh, the light faded pretty fast we were given 15 minutes for uh, basically setting up our fastest lap and uh, what happened was that by the time we were in the last 5 minutes there was no light it was pitch black and even if there was any form of light all of our tinted visors made it as good as night so what i was capable of seeing was just the braking markers and the difference between gray and brown so yeah i had my balls in my mouth and i was very scared but i was safe and i got back to the pit with no accident however that did affect my lap time and i started off p7 on the grid so i had a little bit of a mountain to climb but i wasn't afraid since everybody was very very close to each other in terms of pace and that brings me to race day race day on sunday i got to experience my coach abhishek vasudevan come p2 and uh, 
I also got to experience my first ever crash on track. So let's go by the timeline. I line up at the start grid and uh, nerves settle in. But I felt pretty comfortable. However, I did know that I was riding uh, along with other people who didn't have track experience nor race experience just like me. So I did take it easy during the launch. I did launch and everybody launched pretty much at the same pace. But it was helter skelter from the beginning. And I did feel quite overwhelmed before the first corner. So my reaction was to panic and press the rear brake. So the rear brake basically locked and I was sent straight. Uh, in through the first corner. So I had to miss the chicane and wait for everybody. So I left everybody ahead of me and then joined the track again, but I was last and with a fair gap to the people that I actually wanted to compete with. So I pushed, I pushed, I pushed and within five laps, I was back to my position and maybe two positions up. I was maybe P5, P6 and uh, I tried to get greedy because I did feel like I was faster than the people in front of me and I tried to outbreak somebody before Mickey Mouse corner which is again a long straight and then another chicane but uh, while trying to cut Mandar Savant from Evo in the corner he took it a little bit earlier than me and I was riding pretty hot at that moment so I did slightly missed the apex and he was going in for an early apex and that meant we gave each other a hug uh, on the track and I was perfectly fine since he hit the basically the side of my bike but he was in a bad shape because his body essentially turned into my bike and his visor got hit, he hurt his shoulder, he hurt his arm and yeah, Mandar bro. I'm really sorry. I know it is my fault since on a motorcycle, on a track, it is all up to the overtaker to make sure that you're safe. And that is my shortcoming. So I'm really sorry, Mandar. I hope you're doing very well. And uh, I can't wait to ride with you again because we both really vibed <laughs> at the trip. So yeah, that is uh, my sad ending to uh, KTM Cup. If everything would have been right and I would have executed that uh, overtake correctly and I, wouldn't, and I wasn't greedy, I could have come back with a P4, but that is all in the numbers and as Max Verstappen said, if my grandmom had balls, she'd be my granddad. So exactly with that logic, I am taking an L on this one and I DNF'd essentially. So yeah. It's my first ever race and I really, really loved racing, which is why I picked up one of these beasts because a uh, <laughs> funny story was that I was looking at the pro boys actually practice on track and they were ridiculously fast. But a little Jeremy McWilliams, I don't know if you've known, if you've heard of him, but he was also there and he was riding this Gen 3 Duke 390 and the way he was overtaking people was ridiculous. Like it cannot be that the pros were so slow that this bike just basically walked past them. So I'm pretty sure the bike also had something to do with it. And uh, that's exactly why I bought this baby. So yeah, now I have the racing bug and now I'm going to be doing some track days, going out with the motorcycle on tours and basically enjoying the two-wheeler lifestyle because I've just fallen in love with it. So yeah, that's my story from Curry and I just can't wait to get back to the track and rip it again because there is no better feeling than pushing the bike and being one with the wind, with all of the movement of the bike and just freedom. Wow. I think that's a cool story and uh, I'm really looking forward to Speed Tales doing well. I just hope that people are enjoying this and uh, yeah, nice talking to you guys. I am off for a couple of days, you guys might not see me for a couple of days 
but you guys will be seeing soham and uh, i honestly enjoy watching soham on screen so enjoy soham on screen he's going on a hyderabad tour and you guys are going to get some crazy content but uh, when i come back 